aqui. Going live too on Facebook Live. We got Facebook Live, Periscope Live. Oh, oh, so exciting. All right, well, what do you say we start out the day the best way we possibly could with a little simultaneous sip? Oh no, I don't know where my cup is. Here's your cup. Here, it's right here. Oh, um, mommy, your cup is it's over there, so go ahead. Everybody, raise your glass and join us in the simultaneous sip. All right, what is today's question? Why is it important to be bored sometimes? Why is it important to be bored sometimes? I'm going to get this a little closer. So why is it important to be bored sometimes? I think it's, an, it's important to be bored sometimes because when you always have stimulation, then you don't have time to start to try to think creatively about what you want to do. And like, if you just have a screen, then of course you can just be entertained for so long. But if you don't have anything to do, then you have to think about more ways that you want to spend your time that can make you more creative. Um, and also when you're bored, then you can start to like, then you can, it just gives you a lot of space to think. And if you have a lot of stimulation, you keep wanting more stimulation and more stimulation. And then you kind of have to take a break from it before you, because then it can start becoming like everything is just like so drowned out by all the stimulation around you. How obvious is it that I literally woke up 10 minutes ago? Can see it on my face. No, no all right. Hopefully, just nobody will notice. <laughs> also, I'm just tired. <laughs> Friday is yeah, good. everyone's so tired Friday. on Friday. Fridays are tough, man. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, I also uh, have even more stuff to do on Friday. More stuff? Yeah, she has piano. And I have two Taekwondo. And we have to play like five hours of Minecraft. Yeah, I know, right? That's There's at the a lot end of stuff to when do. I barely can keep my eyes open. Right, yeah. Yeah, well, after five hours of Minecraft, that'll energize you to be ready. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had well, to get that. I, added to, I would like to add it to Sumi's point. Also, when you are bored, uh, you, have, you have time to think about what is important. Right, so maybe made this a point that mm -hmm. it helps you to be creative uh, yeah. when you are not constantly stimulated. Mm -hmm. If you're and caught up in all the stimulation, then you don't have time to think about, oh, do I really want to do this? Or is there something else better that I can do with my time when it's just kind of like, mm -hmm. it's right there and just do it? Yeah, it, it helps you to think about what is important when you're bored. Yeah, I think one of the things that is a little bit more unique about your and my uh, upbringing is that it involved periods, long stretches of boredom, or at least periods where we weren't, we, we didn't have something that was stimulating, like in your face stimulating, mm -hmm. right? Um, I didn't have any. Well, when you talk about your, like, you talk about, like, how in the countryside of China in the fall, that, like, oh, it was so exciting. It was one of your favorite times of the year because then all the little children get to go out and light everything on fire. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stimulating. Yeah. And, but it was also, it's also, like, uh, it's a story. Oh, yeah, we, uh, on Chinese New Year, we play fireworks. And that's stimulating. <laughs> so by periods of boredom, hmm. I mean, remember when we were reading, we were reading Little House on the Prairie, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and like, what did they do to entertain themselves? Slid down hay bales. Yeah. <laughs> and they listened to Dad play the fiddle or Mom read the Bible. Right. Yeah. 
And, you know, I don't know if they thought that they were bored, but if we went back there and did that, given what we're used to, like five hours of Minecraft on Friday night. Yeah. We would be we bored. We would be bored out of our minds. Yeah. For like how long? How long do you think we'd like habituate? Do you know Might what that take means? you a month. To habituate. To habituate means to change your habits and your mindset to a point where you re you basically reset. I don't know, maybe one, two, three weeks ish. Yeah. Three weeks to a month. I think that's about right. Well we can like nowadays when we go on walks and we're adding to a little race. That's stimulating. Right? So what is stim what's stimulating to somebody depends a lot on what they're used to, right? What's their yeah. baseline? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's two aspects to it. One is like there's a personality aspect to it. Right. And then there's a recent experience adjustment, right? So we spent a lot of time like looking into this and trying to understand it. So like for you, mommy, you're like, you don't necessarily want tons of stimulation. Right? Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah, when we had all like the four screens set up, that was we hilarious. were all talking over each other while we were like, oh my god, there's TV going on, there's the talking. The TV was the cooking show, I was doing Minecraft, Sumay was next to me doing Civ, and Daddy was on the She was the doing same Civ game. with me. On, uh, and Daddy was on the same game of Civ over there, then Mama was trying to watch. Right. So responsible parents are like, let's be careful with screen time. And then we're like, okay, the more screens, the happier we are. Let's bring them all into the basement. And so we just like had screens everywhere. It was screens, beautiful screens, you know. And um, that was interesting. But it wasn't necessarily like the most relaxing thing for mommy. Right. In part because you want like a lower level of stimulation also like experts suggest that you for the half an hour before you go to bed you actually should be screen free so you, your body is getting ready to rest okay not five hours right before bed play no, minecraft but half an hour okay. right oh yeah no that makes sense yeah i always take a i always take a shower which is about half an hour so i think <laughs> i've been half sticking half to shower. that yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Should I stop showering in the morning and start showering in the evening? No, 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 it's fine. Whatever works What's best for you. you. Usually, usually I just like go play my Legos until the light finds out, and then I quickly turn off the lights and turn it off. Nice. <laughs> that's a good routine. I think you because like... you take a long okay. Let's time. bring it back. Bring it back. Okay, stay yeah, on topic. Yeah, stay yeah, on topic. Yeah. So the topic is: Should you shower? No, no, no. <laughs> the, top, the topic. The topic is why is it important? Why is it important to be bored? Like, so there's one aspect of, of like how much stimulation we want comes from personality. Another one is kind of what we're used to, right? So if we're used to playing, I remember there was a period when I first started playing Minecraft. I was like, I became addicted to Minecraft, like really quick. Yeah, you were doing and it I was, every night. And I was justifying it. I was like, I was like, kid, we should play more Minecraft. It's been like a whole five minutes, you know. It's, it's so really creative. Like, it's really creative, you know, like all the yeah. stuff that 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 uh, that some of these young men were writing about Minecraft on our platform. Yeah, uh, yeah. I basically agreed with all of it. Um, yeah, same so anyway. with civilization, because you know, help kids learn all the history. Yeah, civilization. Except for the okay, okay, focus, focus. All right, so, so. At that time, it was like if it wasn't Minecraft, it was boring. Like right, <laughs> yeah. And it was tough because, and then, and then we got the joint server. We're all playing simultaneously, oh, yeah, yeah. and then it was just crazy. It was yeah. just oh my goodness. I think on, on a, a typical weekend, the whole like the three of us, we were probably spending like what six to eight hours, probably playing. Yeah. Anyway, so if you're used to that level of stimulation. Little then. House on the Prairie would oh hay bales, god. hay bales. Oh my god, you would. Dad with the fiddle. It's like, Dad, no, get a, get a MacBook. You know, <laughs> come on. Um. So, 
So then what happened? Well, there was a bit of a crash after this. At some point, we kind of hit like a point where we're like, like we can't, we get, we became Minecraft saturated with Minecraft, more. but then it was like, okay, but what else is there in the world? What else is there that can give me that? Then you found civilization. Mm -hmm. No, civilization is a bit slower. Yeah, so it's, it's like, like a board game. Yeah, it's yeah. not really as like stimulating. It's like a board game on the screen. Yeah. Board game mm -hmm. on the screen. But we went through this period of recalibration where yeah, we kind of like, had to go, uh, and like habituate to a world where we weren't just constantly playing Minecraft. And, yeah. and that was a little bit of a painful process. It wasn't terrible, but it was Yeah, like, it was for for a while, kids and I we were reading the Keep of Lost Cities by the Fire. Oh yeah, that's what, what we would do for. Well, how would you characterize that experience? Is it stimulating? It was like I think, or it, it was, is actually more. Um, it was more like relaxing, and mm -hmm. I really and I think that was that was when I was like, that was a time when like Minecraft was like the best thing in the world because like. Kind of like my it wasn't constant Minecraft, but a lot of the time we were just reading, mm -hmm. and that was just that was really fun for me. I know Isla really liked it. Yeah, <laughs> I finished the series and now I'm reading it again, just to uh, just to just to make it uh, just to have just to fill up my time so I can wait until the next book. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but you don't want to read any other books? No, so I've, been actually, been reading I've actually books. been reading a lot of books. I've kind of been like exploring our third mm -hmm. creepy bookshelf book. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but you're not bored when you're reading mm -mm. one of these fiction novels. No. Oh. I sometimes get bored reading nonfiction because not all of them are really that interesting. Like, Salamanders are very amazing animals. They are it's amazing just animals. Like, yeah, they're like, amazing. I mean, like, but the, I don't know. It's just sometimes with nonfiction, it's not as interesting. Whereas with, like, a, I know Isla likes biographies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, Biographies I think that's often more, read like a novel, though. Yeah, because I just, that's I love no, what I uh, like about it. too. What I like about it is it has a lot more depth to it, where you're talking about someone's life, and that can have so many factors. Whereas with like salamanders, it's like amazing creatures. <laughs> but it's still just <laughs> less I'm just interesting. trying to undermine your example. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, so I'm not necessarily convinced that that it's good to experience tons of boredom. Um, but I do oh. think that this is an important question that yeah, a lot of parents ask about, especially yeah, about children. Like Facebook Live? Oh. Um, but like, should we, we should definitely be talking about it. It's okay, don't worry. We, oh, okay, okay. we have a new philosophy that we're not gonna read every comment because it just makes it really hard to have a conversation with each other. Right. It's like, really, what? <laughs> oh, what's going on? Oh. Um, so, oh yeah, you have a wiggly tooth? Okay, stay on topic. <laughs> You're not bored now. Um, so, a lot of parents ask questions about uh, how they use digital media, how much screen time we use, when yeah. to watch movies. Because you don't necessarily want your, because I know, I know that some people, they just spend, like, all the time that they can just, like, get getting stimulated on screens through like different things but I think that it's good to be bored because then you can appreciate that time more and that can become less of a need and more of a kind of just a reward that you can get when let's say you've worked hard all week and you're like okay I'm gonna play some Minecraft um just like we usually do we don't usually play Minecraft any other day than Friday so right so it's kind of and I think stimulation is something that's, like, well, like, it's something that happens, and I think it's it's good to kind of stimulate yourself every once in a while, because then it can give you more, like, Excitement. variety, yeah, in, in your life. 
You definitely want, want every like, now and then you definitely want to just absolutely binge and like have like crazy fun yeah. stimulating experiences. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like mm-hmm. the one we uh, like the one you and me did on Minecraft right before my oh, test. Oh yeah, that was so great. And then I failed my test. Yeah, that was when me. mommy went that to was on the me. conference. All right. So so part of the reason why I think this is so important is that our brains habituate to recent experience, right? And so we can't even get we can't even really experience the the highs of a really awesome, cool, immersive engaged experience if we do it so often that it becomes the expectation. Yeah, because um, you want to make sure that you do have things to, like, have fun, and you can, and that, well, yes, there are these things, and there, there are some things that, um, and you want to be able to do those things to reward yourself, but you don't want that to become a need, because, like, with... Right, it becomes then, a need, instead of, like, a fun experience. Yeah, it it's is like, kind I of must like, have. Yeah, instead of like, oh, okay, I worked really hard. I want to. I'm gonna just. I'm just gonna play some Minecraft, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. And then if you spend a period of time being like, I know we went on that why we camping, adventure camping trip. Why yeah. we adventure was one of the greatest films ever made. Yeah. By us. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but that was part of the reason why I wanted to go was yeah, it was like yeah. no we were gonna go outside we're gonna enjoy the great outdoors and okay, we're not gonna sit and the first it. 12 hours mm. it was so we're just gonna wander around <laughs> outside so why don't we bring our computers to the cabin it was like yeah and then then we really started to get into it Oh, yeah, because also, we also had stimulation by, we went down the wrong side of a mountain, and it was, it was crazy, we went, also, we could have died. Yeah, risking death isn't necessarily the best way. Best stimulation, but it was, I thought it was cool. Yeah. Also, when we went over those huge <laughs> rapids, and oh, yeah. also oh, yeah. when we went over those huge, rap, uh, those huge rapids with the blow-up boat and lots of sharp rocks. Yeah. That was oh, yeah. great. That was great. Yay. Let's hear it for Sharp Rocks. Yay. Okay. <laughs> um, Risking your life is not adventurous. Um, it isn't it kind of adventurous by definition? Yeah. It's not necessarily smart. smart. Yeah. It's but, but, but it's, it's very, very adventurous. adventurous. Yeah. yeah. But not smart. Right. But, not smart. Yeah. That's true. but I, I look back in my life. When I was like in high school, right? I I stayed at the school. It's like I was in the military. Like I studied probably seven days a week and you know, twelve hours a day. And then, like most of the fun part was like four o'clock. I get to play ping pong. Um, that <laughs> was like yeah, that was like awesome. Like I look forward to that thirty minutes of ping pong time. Um, and, and uh, you know, something that you look forward to, but uh, it's like it's a stimulating experience. In a, ideally, you want it to be like helpful in a, in a way that make you healthier or smarter or richer. See, like, stories like that, that, that's why I opened the way I did, where I was like, you and I share these experiences from our childhood of, of extreme like boredom and lacking stimulation Mm -hmm. like when you tell me stories about how when you were a child you would look forward all day to getting able to play ping pong on a concrete table that's what i'm talking about (laughs) um and i think that those i think that some a lot of that is good and 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 i haven't shared one of the main reasons why i'm really glad that you brought up this question but i'll say i I also i you know i i would like some coffee while you want to just to make the point that you want your stimulating experience in some way to be good for you, right? There are a lot of experience. I 
I mean, I think all stimulation can be used to kind of like, well, either like video games can be for like rewarding yourself and like there are some stimulation that like your 30 minutes of ping pong that was, was so exciting to you, but if, if you were like, let's do ping pong, I would argue it. Well, you, you two really have, have not to, like, really yes. gotten into ping pong yet. Yeah, yeah. I've gotten into ping pong, but we used to be like so into ping pong. Remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Used to be like ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Let's do ping pong. Ping pong, ping pong. <laughs> so, yeah. sure, I, I think it's all else equal. It's nice to find things that you absolutely love doing, and it's also really, really good for you. And yeah. Yeah, but... But, I mean, that first few days when Isla and I were playing Minecraft five hours a day on our server together and we're on the same team, and we were having so much fun... And that I didn't pass that, my test. Yeah. And we were having so much There's fun... There's some long-term consequences that... Okay, stop it! Like... Stop it! I don't regret it, though. We, we had these hot dogs that we were cooking in the, in the little cooker oven. Yeah. And we were, we were having so much fun that we just had to find the most efficient way possible to get calories in our body so we could go back and play. And I'm never going to forget how much fun that was. Yeah, I mean... And the fact that it wasn't necessarily good for us, I don't know. Mentally, it was so exhilarating and fun that it's like one of my favorite memories. Yeah, me too. So I'm not against... Like having those kind of deeply immersive well, experiences. Well, and I, what did we do? We went to watch Broadway shows. We went to the museums we in New York. Mm -hmm. So, so, but why is let's really let's try to get some definitive takeaways here on why it's important to be bored sometimes. I think it's very important. I'm really glad you brought this up. How do you guys come up with this? You did. Oh, did I mention it? Oh, okay. Yeah. It was my idea. All right. Sorry. Maybe that's why I'm so excited about it. So, a little bit of background. So, my parents split up when I was five, and one of the uh, things that, that I did growing up was to visit my mom and my grandparents in Iowa. I would drive from my house in, um, in Illinois, cross the Mississippi River, and go to Iowa. And I think I crossed the Mississippi with my brother and sister. Maybe close to a thousand times over the course of a decade. So we're in the car. It was like a three and a half hour trip there, three and a half back every other weekend. And then in Iowa, we didn't ever watch TV. We Sometimes we would watch a movie, but there was no TV watching and there was no computer. And there was no devices, like generally. There was outside. And your bicycles and part of this is my grandfather is uh um he was mennonite and he brought a lot of that culture with him of you know we just don't want to do a lot of electronics and and my momo she would call she would call the tv the boob tube and it was like talked about how like you don't want to do a lot of that it'll rot your brain like so that so that was the kind of environment right and so boredom i didn't feel bored but I got really good at coming up with ways to entertain myself. So I would create games uh, out of my toys. And I was always playing with other children. And I was you know, outside and very physically active. And I kept that up for you know, a long time, even into college, even to this day. Like I feel like I brought a lot of that with me uh, of having a creative approach to coming up with fun things to do. Um, and I don't think I would have had that if I wasn't forced to spend hours in the car just left to my own mind, uh, uh, and, and, and then just hours in the basement or in my room just trying to come up with things to do. Um, and I, and I didn't have any less fun than anybody else either because I habituated to it. That's the other thing. It's like, it's not like you miss out on anything. No, I, right? I, I look back at high school. Lighting everything on fire, right, Mommy? Yeah, yeah. high school is probably one of the best times in my life. Um, Before you met me? <laughs> I, 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 Go ahead, Mommy. Tell us more about it. Because I, I've 
you know, I felt a sense of purpose all the time. And I had, you know, I was learning all the time. I am kind of at the peak of my performance all the time. Uh, you know, I'm very alert. Like, um, and then I have things that I look forward to. Uh, there's nothing, you know, the, uh, it's, it's very intense, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I felt I was like, you know, in the flow. Um, flow state. Flow state. And there's really not much like painful experiences. Um, flow state. So, and so. Uh, I had the, but another thing was that my schedules are so regular. Like I wake up six o'clock in the morning, you run 5K, you know, whether it's cold or hot or rainy, you just go out, you run 5K. And then I walk five feet to the coffee and that feels hard enough. <laughs> but I, I, I loved it because it's like, you know, just, it feels good. It feels good to run the first thing in the morning and every day. Um, Should we do that? Yeah. No. Every time I, I kind of think maybe like we should that. try it just to see if we're like totally missing out. No, we just try it. Like, what if we did it one one day? So Remember what we were talking about new experiences about how that I helps you stay like a lot, child. Every time I start running a lot, I either start wheezing or hypoventilating or getting tired. We can just we do can have a mobile walk. nebulizer. Fast walk. I'll drag it behind you. You can just be like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have my coffee. Okay, all right. We can do fast Maybe not. Or... We'll figure <laughs> something out. Yeah. But it's because it's also outdoors. You know, you get outside. What about the people you get who have active. asthma? Do they still do that? What if we just went on a walk in the morning? Yeah, people, if they can't do it, they just walk around or they do, you know, exercise. Because um, if we wake up earlier, then we'll have more time to walk earlier. Yeah. <laughs> they do exercise. So what are some takeaways that we have for this before we close it out about like the importance of boredom? Um, so is it what is it important? Why is it important? I think it's also how you define patience. How you define okay. the bo boredom, right? Like what yeah, you mentioned let's define earlier. Boredom. Your baseline, right? If your baseline is full of stimulation all the time. Boredom is when you're in an environment that has below your baseline stimulation. Right. So it's all within your influence to set the baseline. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not really dependent on devices per se. But yeah. I, so I actually, when I brought it up, I was thinking about it in terms of devices. Yeah. So what I really meant, practically speaking, was, is it important to take long periods away from devices, which because of, of gaming and because of uh, movies and like these, you have all these experts that create movies and games that are so good and so right. entertaining. It's like they got teams TV of psychologists shows. that shows. their whole job is to basically try to get somebody you know, addicted yeah, and just make yeah. them want to watch the next show, next show, next show. So this is a, this it's is something that's changed. Media too. Social media, social media too. All, all the, that stuff. All the parties with all kinds of drugs, you know. I have, no, I'm not talking about that. I, I'm not <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> we completely switched topics. I'm not talking about that. Okay. I'm also against children engaging in parties with drugs, so just to be clear. <laughs> yeah. That's not, but that's not as controversial. But it's not somebody's out there watching me like, what's wrong with that? Sugar. Sugar, sugar is a kind of drug. But right. sugar is a yeah. kind of drug when people and kids, kids go to birthday parties. That's and true. Eat cake. That's right. a good point. Yeah. So wait, Halloween. is what mommy just we characterized see. basically a childhood birthday party? Yeah. What if kids go to parties with drugs? And then I'm sitting here thinking about one thing, but actually, that's just going to a kid's birthday party yeah. and eating cake and ice cream. Because I, because oh technically God, sugar, sugar is a drug. Is a drug. Yeah. That's, that's that's so good. it's like, it's okay to do it once in a while, but it, at, but at least now you can do it every day. It's like it's not a scarce oh, yeah. 
the stimulation. There's no scarcity. Is there's no scarcity. And why do we need scarcity, kids? Scarcity creates value. Scarcity yeah. creates value. And it is true in this context as well. Yeah. So so when I brought this up, I wanted to bring up for 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 that that's a good example too, but a lot of it was these devices and the fact that they are designed to be addictive. Right. Social media, video games, television movies. Right? Well, all all food, these things. Food and drinks also designed to be addictive. Like and these things um there's no scarcity. We made it so cheap, right. widely no available that it's there all the time. And if it's there all the time, then our that brains are not designed time. to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Like we spent two million years evolving in a world where House. These kinds yeah. of things Clearly. were like always scarce, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you came across, like, why is it that people binge eat eat sugar, right? Because that mm -hmm. was like that was like one of the few sort of so drug induced, scarce. immersive, hyper like oh my god I'm so happy type experiences that you could have. So if right. you came across like a plum tree, you yeah. know, a million years ago, you would just eat as many plums as you could. Before. You would just stuff yourself. <laughs> Just because, you know, otherwise a gorilla is going to come and eat it all, mm -hmm. right? And your body was actually able to do that. If your body was designed to say if you had one of those experiences or one of those opportunities to just eat all the fruit that you possibly could stuff inside your body, then that was good because it was so rare. It right, would happen yeah. like, you know, every few months maybe you would actually come across a pear tree or something. Right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're in this world where it's like everywhere. I can just constantly have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a crazy, crazy thing to wrap your head around. Like yeah, yeah. I think I feel like mm -hmm. every like fifth grade or younger teacher should sit kids down and explain this huge change in reality. Yeah. Yeah. It was impossible to have these extremely happy super intensive stimulative experiences on demand 24 hours a day seven yeah. days a week For 365. Me, when i was little the only time i got to have candy is on chinese new year it's really, not really candy it's basically just sucking on a hard popsicle are you talking about moon cake that totally doesn't count <laughs> moon cake does well, moon not cake count is moon cake is yummy, yummy. Well, that's the like same matter of that, that's the same. <laughs> Another occasion you can uh, have some sugar I is um, mid-autumn day, you have mooncake. But the mooncake, you talk about the mooncake I got, is not sugary when I was little. It was not as sugary, taste sweet as the mooncake I got for you guys. Old school. Yeah. It's just a teeny bit of sugar because sugar is very scarce. It's very expensive. Right. I thought in the summer you got to suck on a sugar cane. Oh, sugar cane, yeah. But it's most. But you spend more time, like you get just a, a little bit of sugar by sucking on sugar cane for an hour. That's <laughs> fabulous. That's fabulous. There's people that kind of reminds me of the story yesterday about the guy and living in the the box, right? I feel like people look back and go, "When I was a child, I got to suck on sugar cane." <laughs> yeah, but that was like one of the most exciting experiences kids point. can have. That's right. Uh, when I was little. So, so one of the key takeaways from this, I think, is um, this idea that it's not that children who look back on their child or adults looking back on their childhood and the the most amazing experience they ever had was that they got to suck on sugar cane. The high that they felt is not higher than the high that Isla and I felt when we got to play Minecraft like crazy for three days. It's not. The actual emotional experience of that yeah. was just as high right. because it relates to, well, what? how did it feel relative to other experiences that you had over the course of your life, right? right yeah. And so... If you can't go above the highest high emotionally, then how do you experience more of those highs? Also, reminded you me. Hang on, I want to finish this key point and then jump right in. You have to take so, a break from it. You have to take a break from it. The only way you can actually remove the ability to experience.
those extreme highs, those stimulative experiences that we look back on and go, oh, that was awesome, is if we take breaks. Because if we don't, we never allow ourselves to bring back that habituation. Mm -hmm. And that goes for everybody, right? No matter your access to devices or, or what have you. All right. Yeah, well, uh, just kind of reminded a, a point I you know, learned from uh, Tony Robbins. He says, it's so important to, to actually- <laughs> I was, I was really, really I, awesome. That's me. Go ahead, go ahead. It, it is so important is that for you to carefully decide what you associate with pain and what you associate with pleasure, mm. right? If you associate so much of, say, playing video games non uh, uh, nonstop three days with so much pain, uh, so much pleasure, you always tell yourself that, and you know, then you'll convince yourself that's like the most fun thing in the world. But in reality, yeah. there's a lot of, there's so many alternatives that can produce dopamine, right? That make it so fun or excitement. Like for me, like going to the gym, like exercise, really get my heart rate up. That's fun. Like I would think that's more fun than sitting on my butt, play something for three days, right? And uh, and I, I- I don't know, you should try it. Don't knock yeah. it till you try it. Yeah. Well, but uh, but I think it's so important that if something is not good for you and you don't associate too much pleasure with it, it's also like a lot of these. I think movies. I call them like <laughs> trash oh, movies, trash movies or trash shows. Right? It's like oh, kind of fun when you watch it, but the aftertaste is horrible. Like. Um, so I don't want, I never want to associate pressure to these experiences. I associate, I assign pain point to these experiences because it helps me make better decisions for myself. Because the reality is that we are constantly subject to all kinds of stimulation that's passive, not good for us long term. And we really need every ounce of discipline to fight against it to live a healthy it's life. It's really hard. I it completely really agree with hard. every single thing that you said. Yeah. Um, on that note, I think we may wrap this up because in terms of like high stimulative fun experience and wow, I can't wait to ride around on my hovercraft. I think I know where I live. <laughs> so I think we'll close it out. Okay. All right. What's the work to so hard? Now I really want to ride on my hovercraft. <laughs> I really want to sleep. Okay, I'm gonna. All right, thank you for joining this episode of. Girls, girls. girls. and okay. mom and. She's a girl. But technically, mommy's a girl, so yeah, we're just so gonna it keep works. it. Fro and girls. How do we turn it off? We. <laughs> Cracky.